Hello. Well, we've finally reached the end of the book of Acts in our Aussie Bible study. And if you've been following us all the way through, you will have a lot of revelation, I'm sure, about how Christianity began and how it's been carried down through the ages. The book of Acts, as we told you earlier, is written by Dr. Luke, who was a Gentile and one of the only Gentiles that has written uh, parts of the Holy Bible. So he wrote um, the Gospel of Luke, first of all, to tell people about Jesus, the life and, and times of Jesus, which he got from many uh, witnesses. And then he followed um, Paul in, on a lot of his missionary journeys and wrote the book of Acts to, to describe Paul's journeys, how Paul um, carried the gospel. He was commissioned by the Lord Jesus Christ himself when he was struck by a bright light on the road to Damascus and he was told that he was going to take the gospel, the good news, to the Gentiles. Then, of course, he got into trouble with the Jewish leaders at the synagogue and they wanted to crucify him they wanted to kill him and he said no I appeal to Caesar and I'd like to have my case heard in Rome so that's why he was taken to Rome and of course on the way to Rome the ship was wrecked and they washed ashore on the island of Malta so today we pick up the story in the book of Acts chapter 28 from verse 1 once safely on shore, we found out that the island was called Malta. The islanders showed us unusual kindness. They built a fire and welcomed us all because it was raining and cold. Paul gathered a pile of brushwood and as he put it on the fire, a viper, driven out by the heat, fastened itself on his hand. When the islanders saw the snake hanging from his hand, they said to each other, this man must be a murderer, for though he escaped from the sea, the goddess of justice has not allowed him to live. But Paul shook the snake off into the fire and suffered no ill effects. The people expected him to swell up or suddenly fall dead, but after waiting a long time and seeing nothing unusual happen to him, they changed their minds and said he was a god. There was an estate nearby that belonged to Publius, the chief official of the island. He welcomed us to his home and showed us generous hospitality for three days. His father was sick in bed, suffering from fever and dysentery. Paul went in to see him and after prayer placed his hands on him and healed him. This is what Christians need to do. Just follow what Paul did in Malta. When this had happened, the rest of the sick on the island came and were cured. They honoured us in many ways, and when we were ready to sail, they furnished us with the supplies we needed. And moving on to verse 11. After three months, we put out to sea in a ship that had wintered in the island. It was an Alexandrian ship with the figurehead of the twin gods Castor and Pollux. From there we set sail and arrived at Regium. The next day and south wind came up and on the following day we reached Pudioli. There we found some brothers and sisters who invited us to spend a week with them and so we came to Rome. The brothers and sisters there had heard that we were coming and they travelled as far as the Forum of Appius and the Three Taverns to meet us. At the sight of these people, Paul thanked God and was encouraged. When we got to Rome, Paul was allowed to live by himself with a soldier to guard him. So he's under house arrest uh, and the Christian brothers and sisters were probably supplying him with all he needed. Verse 17. Three days later, he called together the local Jewish leaders. When they had assembled, Paul said to them, my brothers, although I have done nothing against our people or against the customs of our ancestors, I was arrested in Jerusalem and handed over to the Romans. 
They examined me and wanted to release me because I was not guilty of any crime deserving death. The Jews objected, so I was compelled to make an appeal to Caesar. I certainly did not intend to bring any charge against my own people. For this reason I have asked to see you and talk with you. It is because of the hope of Israel that I am bound with this chain. So that's the hope of glory that comes through Jesus Christ our Lord, the hope of Israel. They replied, We have not received any letters from Judea concerning you, and none of our people who have come from there has reported or said anything bad about you. But we want to hear what your views are, for we know that the people everywhere are talking against this sect. They arranged to meet Paul on a certain day, and came in even larger numbers to the place where he was staying. He witnessed to them morning, from morning till night, explaining about the kingdom of God, and from the law of Moses, and from the prophets, he tried to persuade them about Jesus. Some were convinced by what he said, but others would not believe. They disagreed among themselves and began to leave after Paul had made this final statement. The Holy Spirit spoke the truth to your ancestors when he said through Isaiah the prophet, Go to this people and say, You will be ever hearing but never understanding. You will be ever seeing but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become callous. They hardly hear with their ears, they have closed their eyes, otherwise they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. Therefore I want you to know that God's salvation has been sent to the Gentiles, and they will listen. For two whole years Paul stayed there in, this, uh, in his own rented house, and welcomed all who came to see him. He proclaimed the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. And as we will discover as we proceed with our Aussie Bible study, he wrote many letters to various churches and laid down some foundational truths about Christian living and how we should be behaving and operating as members of the body of Christ. Later, of course, in about 68 AD, um, Paul was eventually executed, martyred by beheading. They couldn't hang him because he was a Roman citizen and the Romans didn't hang their citizens. So he was uh, beheaded, believed to be by Nero, after the burning of Rome. Many of the locals blamed the Christians for that burning of Rome. But uh, then Nero himself committed suicide a couple of months later. So that's the story of Paul up until the end of the book of Acts. And from now we're going to be studying the letters. And the first one, of course, is to the letter to the Romans, the church that had established itself in Rome. So if you want to come with us on a continuing Aussie Bible study, there's a button on the end of this video that you can press. It'll take you to the next study, which is about the book of uh, Romans. In the meanwhile, stay in the Word and may the Word stay in you. And the background scenes you've been watching are from Lake Macquarie in New South Wales. God bless you.